So to begin with this uh, sequence, there's going to be a slide presentation here for a little bit, and I'm going to uh, I'm going to first talk about the, the uh, history of the Flower of Life very quickly, and it's not going to be a long, drawn-out thing. We're talking about like 10 minutes here, and just about, I think, eight slides or nine slides. And uh, I'm doing this because uh, the background needs to lead, be laid down. Uh, I'm sure that there are people in the audience that have no idea what the Flower of Life is or what that information was. And the context of that is important relative to what we're about to talk about. And also the people who will be seeing this, seeing this video, uh, there's bound to be many of those that have no idea about this at all. So uh, we're going to start in there. And uh, since 19... 80, late 84, early 85, until uh, the middle of 1994, for almost 10 years, uh, a presentation was given around the world called The Flower of Life, which is uh, this workshop that was given. It was given orally, uh, so we didn't uh, publish out anything. It was only given orally. And, and then at one point, uh, this uh, workshop uh, was turned over to facilitators, uh, other people who were trained uh, to give this, and they went out to the world. There's somewhere around 300 facilitators in the world, and they're in at least, the last count, about 33 countries. And, uh, and it's continuing to grow, uh, probably because there's something real here. And uh, usually, uh, if, if it isn't, uh, people don't look at it after a while. And for a long time, I said I was going to put this into a book, which took five years. <laughs> <laughs> a little slow, but I was very busy, and uh, and that has finally happened. Um, this is the uh, cover of uh, the new book that just came out about three months ago, called "The Ancient Secret of the Flower of Life," and it's volume one, and it is just the beginning. It's about uh, just a little less than half of the information, and the real important information <laughs> is not in there yet. <laughs> Uh, it's being timed on volume two, which will come out right before the end of this year, right before the year 2000. Uh, there's, it's, everything is timing in this world. <laughs> and so uh, uh, that should come out. It won't take five years this time, I don't think. And now what this uh, information is around, what it's all about, you know, why is it any different than any other information? Why do people care about this? It's because... Many years ago, uh, we dis discovered something in Egypt on one of the oldest walls in Egypt. In fact, one of the oldest walls in the world in, uh, si in, in our civilization. This wall is about roughly 6,000 years old. And there was a, burned into this wall was an etching of, uh, of uh, a design, you might say. And this design looked like this. And uh, as, as this design unfolded in my life, I began to understand what the name was that was given to it by many of the ancient races around the world. And most of them called it the Flower of Life. Uh, we first found this in Egypt, but since then, we found it, uh, I think after that was in England and in Ireland, uh, and then in Israel, and then in Greece, then in Turkey, and uh, in Switzerland and in Iceland and uh, in Japan, in China, in Tibet. Recently, we've even found it in the Yucatan and, and, and Chichen Itza from the Mayans. Uh, it was pretty well dispersed all over the world. And there's about, I don't know, another eight or nine places I'm not saying right now. And, uh, and so why was this same design so important to the ancient peoples all over the world? At least that was the question I asked myself. And, uh, and I spent a long time uh, decoding what this meant uh, with the help of uh, the angelic realms uh, I, and, uh, and certain other uh, people and teachers and beings from around the world uh, to help me to understand what this really was. And the final bottom line of it was, is what the ancients believed was, was this was the absolute key to the entire creation, that there was absolutely nothing in existence, no word you can say, no concept or thought that you could put out, or even a feeling that isn't entirely and completely identified within here. 
every law of physics, every uh, structural pattern known, to, to, known in the universe, every single thing, including biological life forms and the very shape of them and the color of their eyes and how they're formed, everything, it's all in there. And you can prove it. It's not just a, uh, maybe it's in there. It's absolutely in there. And what unfolded from all of this was something that's now being called sacred geometry. All of sacred geometry and all levels of existence of sacred geometry are contained totally within that one image right now. And sacred geometry is the underlying forms and patterns and proportions that everything is created through. The interesting thing about it is, is that you, as a human being, have that pattern around you. From, if you were to look above or from below you, you have a spherical one of these located directly around you in an electromagnetic magnetic field. This magnetic field, uh, electromagnetic field is contained um, primarily in the microwave range and sits at about four degrees Kelvin, which is about four degrees above absolute zero. You can scientifically prove it's there if you have the correct instruments. Uh, but in that outer field of the flower of life, three-dimensionally, so each one of those are not circles but spheres, there are many, many, many shapes and forms uh, that are contained within there, which contain within them all the levels of consciousness and existence. So you are a seed that contains all possibilities without exception. I was recently in the Yucatan with uh, a Mayan shaman named Huns Batsman doing ceremony. And uh, while we were there, there was a man that you do know more, uh, Edgar Mitchell, who was uh, one of the astronauts who landed on the moon. And he was talking about uh, the new science that is emerging uh, in uh, NASA. And uh, as some of you may know, uh, the relativity is presented out by Einstein and the quantum physics, quantum mechanics that emerged uh, later in that never really fit together. There were many little points and places that were uh, incongruent. And the search for the unified field theory uh, has been going on for years and years and years. Uh, many people claiming they found it. But NASA is now claiming they have found it. And, uh, and Edgar said that to try to understand what has happened over the last few years is almost impossible by human, uh, normal human ways of looking at things. That we have uh, evolved very, very quickly over the last uh, five years. He said uh, that in the last five years, NASA has learned as much as entire civilization of the planet has learned in the last 6,000 years. And that they have learned as much in the last six months as they've learned in the last five years. And that was about seven months ago, so who knows where they are now. 